Hey, what's going on guys? So Harry Potter and the lore of the Deathly Hollows. What is the deeper meaning that lies within the tale or allegory of the Deathly Hollows? What is the secret meaning contained within the tale of the three brothers? There's a fan theory which applies aspects of the three brothers of the Deathly Hollows to Voldemort, Harry, and Snape, and that does hold relevance. But the symbolism contained within the allegory of the Deathly Hollows actually extends even beyond the Harry Potter universe. What we wondered is, what is it? The symbol for the Deathly Hollows worn by Lovegood taps into the most viewed and universal occult symbol in the history of the world. The capstone that sits atop the Great Pyramid, a symbol for the construction of the Great Work, the Eye of Horus, the resurrected son of of Osiris, the murdered father of the underworld. Harry Potter himself resonates this archetype. The boy who lived has come to die. The boy who faces death itself. And of course, the lightning bolt that sits above one of his eyes. What is it? The Deathly Hallows? The all-knowing Hermione Granger tells us the story of the Deathly Hallows and the Three Brothers. Notice that just before she reads the story of the brothers, the markings on the wall line up exactly with her head, taking the shape of, of course, horns. Three brothers traveling along a lonely, winding road at twilight reached a deep, treacherous river where anyone who attempted to swim or wade would drown. Learned in the magical arts, the brothers conjured a bridge with their wands and proceeded to cross. Halfway through the bridge, a hooded figure stood before them. The figure was the enraged spirit of death. Cheated of his due, Death cunningly pretended to congratulate them and proceeds to award them with gifts of their own choosing. So in order to give a deeper context to the universality of this symbolism, I'm going to compare this story with the mythological symbolism contained within Back to the Future. Using the brilliant interpretation by Barely Human 11, the dude with the popular Back to the Future videos on YouTube. This comes from his lesser viewed video, drawing comparisons with Greek mythology and the characters within Back to the Future. He shows how Back to the Future is the tale of Zeus embodied by Doc in the battle with Kronos, the titan of time or death. Just as the three brothers are going up against death itself, in Greek mythology Zeus goes up against Kronos or death with the aid of his two brothers, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades whose qualities can be also attributed to the Harry Potter Deathly Hollows narrative. Zeus had his lightning bolt, Poseidon had his trident, Hades had his helm of darkness, which made him invisible. The eldest brother, a combative man, asked for a wand more powerful than any in existence. Death granted his wish by fashioning the Elder Wand from a branch of a nearby elder tree standing on the banks of the river. The Elder One takes the form of the Trident and the brother Poseidon, a powerful hand-wielding weapon. The second brother, an arrogant man, chose to further humiliate Death and asked for the power to recall the deceased from the grave. Death granted his wish by crafting the Resurrection Stone from a stone picked from the riverbank. The second brother can be attributed to Zeus or Doc and the Lightning Bolt. Harry's use of the Resurrection Stone, the Lightning Bolt that he sports over one of his eyes given to him by the personification of death, the Death Eater Voldemort. In Back to the Future, Doc wielding the lightning bolt allows Marty to defeat time while simultaneously resurrecting himself. The conquering of time allowing Doc to throw on a bulletproof vest and survive the gunshots from the terrorist, just as the Resurrection Stone allows Harry to do the same thing just in his own way. The third and youngest brother, who was the most humble and wise, did not trust death, and asked for something to enable him to go forth without death being able to follow. A reluctant death, most unwilling, handed over his own invisibility cloak. Hades had his helm of darkness, which made him invisible. The quality of invisibility can be seen in Marty McFly. The stealth that he uses in his battle against Time and Biff in Back to the Future 2. At the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, Poseidon can be seen with his trident, a weapon yielding great power. Just as Voldemort seeks power through the Elder Wand, Biff seeks power through the Grey Sports Almanac, which always comes to its climax at Poseidon's enchantment under the sea dance. 
In this sense, you can tie the lust for power that Voldemort had to the lust for power that Biff had. In Biff's case, it's the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, all revolving around Grey's Sports Almanac. In the case of Voldemort, it's the Elder Wand. And also very fittingly, they both involve very deeply the mother of the main character, Lorraine McFly and Lily Potter. I see Harry's Cloak of Invisibility as a metaphor for the invisible nature of the occult architects of the world. The world of spelling, symbolism, the use of language, the occult orders, the real Hogwarts you could say. A world that is non-existent and blind to the muggles. The muggles of the world that see all entertainment as simply literalism, triviality, and ultimately meaningless pacification and escape. But Hogwarts doesn't exist. Magic does not exist. The eldest brother traveled to a village where a wizard whom he had quarreled lived. He sought a duel and fought the wizard using the wand, instantly killing the latter. Leaving his enemy dead upon the floor, the eldest brother walked to an inn not too far from the dueling site and spent the night there. Taken by his conscience and lust of the elder wand's power, the eldest brother boasted of this wand gifted by death and his own invincibility. That very night, death transferred to a murderous wizard. The unknown murderous wizard crept to the inn as the eldest brother slept drunk from wine. The wizard slit the oldest brother's throat for good measure and stole the wand. That was when death took the first brother. Biff uses his power to kill George McFly. His abusive power ends up backfiring, culminating at the enchantment under the sea dance, just as Voldemort's abusive power is his ultimate downfall. The second brother returned to his home where he lived alone. Turning the stone thrice in his hand, the figure of the girl he had once hoped to marry before her untimely death appeared at once before him. Much to his delight, yet she was sad and cold, separated from him as by a veil. Though she had returned to the mortal world, she did not truly belong there and suffered. This quality can be placed upon Snape and his unconditional love for Lily or Lilith, which is highly significant within Gnostic and occult thought. This parallel can be further extended out with Clara Clayton and Doc reversing her timeline of death in the third film, preventing her from falling into the ravine, thus Doc using love to reverse her death timeline. Finally, the second brother, driven mad with hopeless longing, committed suicide by hanging from his house balcony, so as truly to join her. That was when death took the second brother for his own. Death searched for the youngest brother as years passed but never succeeded. It was only when the third brother reached a great age, he took off the cloak of invisibility and gave it to his son. Greeting death as an old friend, they departed this life as equals. The cloak of invisibility was a hand down through the generations of potters and obtained by Dumbledore for safekeeping to give to Harry. Again, this is a metaphor for generational occult lineage, safekeepers of esoteric knowledge that survives death and the aging of family members. Similarly, Marty McFly has a deep connection to family lineage, as all three films revolve entirely around ancestral connection. It's even hinted at that George McFly is the keeper of deeper knowledge, through the medium of science fiction writing. Just like the qualities of the three brothers that synthesize in the trilogy Back to the Future, allowing Doc and Marty to once and for all harmonize with time itself, Harry utilizes the power of the Elder One, the Cloak of Invisibility, and the Resurrection Stone, the Three Brothers, to defeat and harmonize with death itself. Yes, Dumbledore has a way of personifying death, in the naturalistic and balanced sense, as all life must eventually die. But the destructive and unbalanced qualities of death are defeated by Harry in the form of Voldemort. With Harry himself embodying the resurrected son, Horace, the capstone of Harry Potter's story, avenging the death of his parents, just as Marty did, in his own way, embodying the symbol of the Deathly Hollows, the synthesis of the qualities of the three brothers, the only path to the transcendence of death. Harry destroying the Elder Wand, just as Marty destroys the Grey Sports Almanac, as both wielded way too much power. I make these comparisons not to indicate that somehow Rowling stole or copied these ideas, but to show that somehow there is a thread of universality within the craft of legit storytelling. The core archetypes that speak to the soul of man have a way of showing up as the narrative of life plays out, 
and master storytellers to understand how to work with these principles to speak to the viewers on a deep subconscious or even a spiritual level. Thanks for watching, and I actually plan on covering other aspects of the Harry Potter franchise in great esoteric detail because the surface has barely even been scratched. I'm gonna get